Well, welcome to another uh, Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 136, uh, making a purple martin birdhouse. Uh, me and my buddy were sitting out in his front yard and, and we were looking at the birds uh, this last spring and we we're talking about purple martin birdhouses and we discovered we didn't know anything about them, how to build them. We knew there were some things you had to know. Uh, so I volunteered to figure all that stuff out and build us one. So here it is. And it's pretty fun. Uh, a lot of takeaways, I think. But we're not going to get any takeaways done. We're not going to get anything done unless we do what? That's right. We need to knock off that chit chat and get to work. Well, I got those uh, box joints in there, and I kind of stuck this thing together. But it just seems uh, it just seems too big. Uh, let me show you what uh, what I got. Let me show you the problem. These purple martin houses uh, have to have to be up on top of a pole that's you know between 12 and 20 feet tall, and so that tells me that, that that pole is going to sag if that uh, birdhouse is too heavy. I may not know uh, very much about building uh, Purple Martin uh, birdhouses, but there are, are whole websites talking about Purple Martin housing and uh, how, to build the, how to build the boxes and what the requirements all are and so forth and so on. So, Let's zoom in here a little bit. Okay, right here you can see that the minimum compartment size is six by six, but I've read other places that if you put a six by six uh, nesting box, a lot of martins will just turn away. They they don't they want them to be deeper. And and this side anyway says that research has determined that seven by twelve is the uh, is the size that the martins like. So I'm using pine to construct the uh, the box, uh, but since the sides and the front are so similar in size, what I've done is I'm using this southern uh, yellow pine here for the uh, fronts. I'm using this clear pine for the sides. That way I can keep them straight. Okay, let's pop it together. My sides, there's my fronts. Well, this seems uh, a little bit more compact. I feel a lot better about this. Uh, let's go over on the board and I'll show you how we're going to put the dividers in for the different nesting areas. These dividers, these uh, nesting dividers, will be set into dados cut into the sides and top. So we need to put uh, two, divi uh, two dados in the top and bottom and one dado in the sides. So that'll be the next job. And what I'm doing here is drilling the holes for the front of the box. But and the only special uh, thing about it is that these uh, holes are drilled at about a five degree angle, so they kind of uh, slope downward so that the water, any water that accumulates in the hole, will drain out. I'll go ahead and do these dados and I'll show you what uh, the, the sides look like. Here's the pieces for the, uh, the box, all the, uh, the sides and the have 
uh, uh, finger joints or uh, box joints and we have these these dados here and those dados will receive our little spacers can't uh, I won't cut out the spacer so I'll get this thing glued up. I'm always cheating when I make boxes uh, and I use the I use the bottom to uh, square the box up but you can't do that with box joints they're too uh, they're too stiff This is my jig for uh, gang sawing the uh, little uh, dividers. Basically, just uh, get them all stacked up there and then squeeze together uh, with some sacrificial tuber force. I'll go ahead and knock these out and I'll be able to put the dividers in and we'll get a, uh, a, a good look at the concept. So our little dividers uh, go in just like that and and the beauty of them is you can if one of them's damaged you can just replace it with make a new one uh, you can also take them out and clean the box out um, and then it's got six six nesting areas on each level and there's two levels I'm attaching the bottoms now. Um, I'm using half inch uh, plywood uh, and I'm just using screws, no glue, no staples. Uh, someday somebody's going to want to work on this thing, you know, uh, make some repairs or clean it out or something. And I think they're going to appreciate the fact that they can remove this bottom without destroying it. This is a roof. I made it uh, very light. I made it very light and the, the height of the roof is the same depth as the other two stories. So it, it kind of makes it symmetrical. So there's our little roof. It's nice and strong. It's light, um, and I think the design, see the roof stacks up just like the rest of the stories do. But I think the design of making the roof the same height as the other floors uh, gives the thing some uh, nice, uh, nice proportions. You have gain access to the box uh, each individual uh, layer comes off and and so you gain into, into the box just by lifting off the individual layers so I've installed these uh, cleats along here to cover up the seam between the boxes and also uh, provide a hatch cover uh, to align the boxes when you stack them on top of one another and then these uh, little clasps here will cinch will cinch down the, the uh, hatch covers, uh, not for strength, just to keep the wind from blowing the uh, the thing apart. Let me uh, show you how this thing works. Here's how it all works. Um, There's the first level with six nests. 
And here's the second level. You see how the cleats automatically line it up. And you take these uh, little spring latches and lock them down. That'll keep the wind from blowing it off. And that's how it, uh, that, that's how it works. But don't go away because we're st we got we got to do the porch. We got to put a finish on it. Uh, so we got plenty to do. I'm going to be painting the roof, <coughs> but uh, I'm going to put a preliminary coat of epoxy on it. Seal it from the weather. And then I'll put, uh, I have some uh, boat paint, paint you put on boat paint that's real waterproof. I found this picture on the internet that looks a lot like ours. What we're going to do is we're going to build these little, uh, this little predator, predator guard here. It, it actually, this dowel that goes through there. That's to keep any uh, birds that uh, you know that crawl out of the nest, baby birds, you know how they fall out of trees and find them on the ground. Well this little rail here will keep them from falling out so easy. So we're making a total of 16 of these little blocks and then we'll run a dowel through it and that'll make up our porch. The first job uh, in building our little porches, I got to uh, trim out this deck. I'm trimming it with uh, cedar. Back over here to the uh, pitcher, uh, I'm gonna have these little dividers. I've already cut those out. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting in this uh, the hole for this dowel. There'll be four dowels two on this side and two on that side. <coughs> now it's critical that that <coughs> dowel hole be in exactly the same position on all the pieces. Let me show you how I'm doing that. I made these little uh, these little blocks. I just copied them off the uh, picture off the internet. And I built this little jig so it's all solid. And I can slide my blocks in there. I haven't got these things made yet, but I'm uh, curious to see what they're going to look like. So I'm threading one on. So that's basically how it's going to how it's going to look. I'm going to hold those uh, little dividers up. I'm going to tack them in there with uh, pocket screws. Do that next. Oh, I'm attaching our little porches. Um, I'm not using any glue, and this is a totally non. This is a totally non-structural uh, arrangement here, so I'm just tacking it in with uh, pocket screws. The uh, dowel here is just a press fit. Uh, I want to be able to take that dowel in and out, remove these things, make this thing uh, repairable in the future. Here I'm just trimming off the end of the uh, dowel. I'm leaving a little, a little pigtail coming out here. Just so you can grab a hold of it if you need to. Well, it looks like we start uh, worrying about putting some stain on this thing. Finishing the outside with uh, cedar oil. It's 
some people say these things need to be painted, but other people stain them. Uh, this uh, cedar oil will both uh, preserve the wood and act as a final finish too. Well, I got everything stained, and I got the. Uh, I remembered to stain underneath too because remember, we're going to be looking up at this thing. This is the bracket that uh, came with the pole. It looks a little flimsy to me. I went ahead and uh, installed it in accordance with the directions. And once this stain dries a little bit, we'll see if let's. We'll put this thing on the pole and see what happens. Well, there's our nifty little uh, purple Martin birdhouse. It's uh, two layers deep, stackable. You can take it apart, clean the boxes out, box joints. We didn't know anything about uh, Purple Martin birdhouses when we started, but this looks pretty good to me. Well, that'll do it for another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 136. Um, making, designing and, and building a Purple Martin birdhouse. Uh, turned out uh, okay. The, uh, <clears throat> I think I would have preferred it maybe a little lighter, but uh, uh, you know it is what it is so thanks for watching uh, tweet and Facebook and like and favorite and comment and all that stuff you do on the internet but most important what is it make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday thanks for playing along <laughs>